The day-long music festival known as Ellapalooza drew crowds to the Wildwood Amphitheater and helped make the world a more accessible place. The Lake Orion community gathered at the Orion Veterans Memorial to remember the lives lost 23 years ago and to honor our brave heroes. The last few car shows of the season are benefiting from the beautiful September weather, including the Galling Super Cruise. And the Lake Orion Dragons hosted the Troy Colts during their home opener. Could they keep their undefeated streak going? We'll have highlights coming up. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. We'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of Owen TV News. Years ago, two local moms wanted their children with special needs to have the same experiences and opportunities as other children and began a quest to make the community more accessible. A decade later, their efforts continue. On Saturday, September 14th, the Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of the 10th annual Ellapalooza Music Festival. The event is the result of a joint effort between the DAISY Project Michigan and Orion Township. The day-long event kicked off at 2 p.m. with a performance by the D-Man Group and a total of seven different acts entertained the crowd throughout the day, including Levi Bootcut and the Straight Legs, Cowboy Company, the Gasoline Gypsies, with Sunset Boulevard bringing things to a close. Yeah, I mean, we've been blessed. Um, so my sister-in-law, Shannon Jones, um, she knows a lot of people through 20 Front Street, and yeah, so we're able to have that connection. But some of these repeating guys, like Levi, you hear right now in the background, one of our favorites, they just keep coming back. And it's amazing to watch these young musicians grow. They get married, they're having babies, but they still come back and they love us and we love them and it's amazing. In addition to music, visitors enjoyed food and refreshments, family-friendly activities, and there was a cornhole tournament and about a dozen vendors set up tents along the path at Walwood. Well, obviously we so appreciate them. I mean, it does take a village, like the vendors, the volunteers, we would never survive without the volunteers and we appreciate them so much and we hope that they feel our love when they come and help us out. And, and that's the other thing, like people volunteer, they come back every year, right? They wanna volunteer, they love to do it, so it's great. 10 years ago, organizers spent about six weeks organizing the first Ellapalooza, which took place in July the event has grown and evolved over the past decade. Obviously the number of people attending, right? And I mean, what we're doing is creating awareness. So obviously um, that's the biggest thing, right? Now we have the Miracle League of North Oakland and Let Them Play at Friendship Park and those things. So people are becoming more of aware of what we're trying to do. So therefore, then they see the event. So. If you missed Saturday's event, you can still contribute to the cause. Visit ellapalooza.org or the daisyprojectmi.com to make a donation today. 23 years ago, the world was forever changed when terrorists attacked the United States. Almost 3,000 lives were lost in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. On the evening of Wednesday, September 11, the Lake Orion community gathered at the Orion's Veterans Memorial for a very special ceremony. Board Chair Robert Smith welcomed those in attendance, then introduced keynote speaker Kim Urbanowski. The Orion Township Treasurer shared her memories of the morning of September 11, 2001. We're all affected in some way by the heinous attacks on our country 23 years ago. And some people lost their lives helping others. Some people lost their lives simply by going to work or traveling. In the days, weeks, and months following, we stood united in our grief, our shock, our anger, but mostly in our patriotism and love for one another and our communities. Remember that we all have a story to tell our, about our experiences on that day. Never forget your experience. Following some musical performances, VFW Post 334 Commander James Hubbard recognized three first responders, Andrew Martinez from the Orion Township Fire Department, EMS Coordinator Kyle Cameron, and Justin Barnes from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. I don't think the main ingredient in us being unified and coming together is another major tragedy. I think the main ingredient is all of us that are here tonight 
So I just ask on us a little homework for us. Uh, when we go home tonight, think about what we missed from that date, September 12th, 2001. And tomorrow when we get up and go out into the world, let's all just try to put a little bit more of that back into the world. So again, thank you very much. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Retired Pontiac Police Officer Lee Reyes brought the ceremony to a close with the playing of taps. The mission of Dutton Farm is to empower and support adults with disabilities to live a life full of purpose, inclusion, and dignity. Started in 2010, Dutton Farm is a family affair, and recently the community came together to celebrate some major additions to the property. On Friday, September 13th, friends, family, staff, and dignitaries gathered at Dutton Farm to celebrate the grand opening of a brand new adult education facility with a ribbon cutting ceremony. We're celebrating the grand opening of our new adult education facility to be able to provide support to more individuals with disabilities in our community. We're socializing with each other, we're providing engaging and dignified support so individuals will um, be able to reach their goals that they've set for themselves, learn new things, spend time with their friends, and be able to get out and access their communities in the way that they deserve. Attendees then moved over to an animal pen for a second ribbon cutting. We have animals on site here that's part of our skill building program. We do a lot of horticulture and animal care. And in the process of building our new facility, which was greatly needed, we had to demolish the current animal structures that were in place. So they needed a home too. So thanks to the generosity of Ford Philanthropic Fund, we were able to purchase brand new facilities for our goats, sheep, and pig. So we thought that they deserved their own ribbon cutting as well. <laughs> The roots of Dutton Farm were established in 1985 when Jim Smither purchased a cornfield on Dutton Road to build a home on. Years later, that property now houses Dutton Farm. So we built and then it was probably about maybe uh, five years later as my daughter Becca started growing older, she has Down syndrome, we said we're going to build her a house on the property next door. So we bought that property that this is on now and she decided she didn't want to move out, she wanted to stay with us. So we said well and that's the genesis of it. We said we're going to turn it into a farm for all the, all the neighborhood kids like this. Today, Dutton Farm allows those with special needs to develop skills, grow produce, create products and art, and sell them to the public. There's a store in the grounds of Dutton Farm, and its farmers also attend community events. So we want to spread awareness, we want to drive advocacy and build relationships and so normalize um, just the inclusion of individuals with disabilities and just everyday events in the community. Um, and so we try to participate in chamber events and other things where we sell our product and bring our participants to uh, enjoy the event and Kim, our, our Director of Development, does a lot of that. There are a few places that are more special, uh, I think, in our community than, than Nutton Farm. The, the people, the, the founders, their mission, the farmers themselves, uh, it, it's an honor for us to call them one of ours because of the great work that they do and the, uh, and the purpose that they give so many people in our community. You can help support Dutton Farm by doing a little shopping at the farm. You can also make a donation at DuttonFarm.org. Canterbury Village has hosted numerous car shows throughout the summer, including the Shifters Auto Club car show every Thursday night. Recently, the season came to an end with a huge show by one local nonprofit organization. On the morning of Sunday, September 1st, 108 classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods gathered on the grounds of Canterbury Village for the first ever Lake Orion Lions Club charity car show. This is fantastic, 108 cars. I was hoping we could get to like 50 to 75 and it exceeded our goal. And you know, 108 cars, we have no more room. So I'm gonna have to talk to Keith about expanding some of the areas that we can uh, use a little bit more space. Um, everybody seems to be having a good time. It's a beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for a better day. Cruisers paid an entry fee and took part in a 50-50 raffle to help raise money for the Lake Warren Lions Club. Well, it's going to help fund our 
biggest community service project of the year, which is our Christmas basket oh, program. Uh, but you know, there's also our scholarships, our eyeglasses, our kids site program, um, you know, everything else that we do. But uh, it's it's going to be great. Pre-registration was twenty dollars, and the day of was um, twenty-five. So about. 70% of the cars that are here are paid today, so that was that was that more money for us. Um, now we've got our two big sponsors. We got Dort Financial who helps sponsor us, and our uh, presenting sponsor, Scalnick Ford. Um, they donated a thousand dollars to us, and they are out here today with their brand new Mustang to display and promote for their own business. We've been uh, part of the Lake Orion community for uh, 60 years this year, actually, and. The Lions Club, they've been around for as long as I can remember, and, and uh, so it's a great uh, organization to just associate with and you know, be a part of it. What are your impressions as you walk around this beautiful campus today? Well, Canterbury Village is a gem, and I'm really uh, excited about the turnout that they had. They said they got over 100 vehicles here, so for a first car show, that's pretty impressive, and it's a perfect day. Also taking place at the same time was a gathering of 30 Jaguars belonging to members of the Jaguar Affiliates Group of Michigan. Established in 1967, the group has held their Concord Delegants annually for 56 years, with the event taking place at Canterbury Village since 2018. Yeah, we've always loved the shows here at Canterbury because you're in the middle of all these shops and trees and just, just a pleasant, pretty peaceful place to have the cars, nice background for pictures. We all, we all like pictures, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and lots of things to see, especially today with the two shows going on. So I haven't had a chance to get through the uh, Lions Club show, but I'm anxious to walk through that as well. We all like all kinds of cars. For more information about the Jaguar Group, visit jagm.org. For more information about upcoming Lions Club events, visit lakeorionlions.org. You can also find them on Facebook. Over the summer, Galling View at GMC has hosted several car cruises that benefit local organizations. Recently, the dealership hosted one last bash of the season. On the morning of Saturday, September 14th, well over 100 cruisers gathered in the parking lot of the dealership for the Galling Super Cruise, the third and final car cruise of the year. Each cruise has benefited a local community organization, and this one was no exception. Lake Orion boosters served burgers from a food truck and a 50-50 raffle, and generous donations went toward VFW Post 334 and the Orion Veterans Memorial. And since many cruisers are veterans, the event allowed the VFW to recruit new members. Galling is probably one of the best people in this, in, in this area that uh, put out for the community. They're community-minded. They make sure that everything is community-involved. Well, VFW, for example, they give a lot to the VFW Children's Home up in Eaton Rapids. Uh, they support a lot of groups around here that are, um, uh, you know, that need it and stuff like that. And the War uh, Orient Veterans Memorial that helps us keep that up because that's uh, strictly by donations and stuff like that and to keep it the beautiful thing that it is. So. Mr. Cooper and Mr. Gowling both are very community orientated and we want to give back to the community who gives to us. We want to help the community. Um, this year we're doing, any, we're going to do our own trunk and treat, which we'll announce a date um, a little bit, probably next week. But we're also going to be part of at least eight or nine other middle school, not middle school, elementary schools, uh, Boo Bash, the village uh, trunk and treat. We're going to be part of that because we want to be part of the community. We also we also sponsor Holly Jolly Folly, which is what I believe to be North Oakland County's biggest attended event, which all that money goes right to the Orient Lighted Parade, which is the biggest lighted Christmas parade in the state of Michigan. So we want to be part of it. We're you know and we want to help. Uh, we do a lot of things with the school, the high school especially. So it, it's it's how Mr. Cooper was raised, how I was raised, how Mr. Golling was raised. The community is, is a number one goal to, to keep them happy and try to help out as best you can. 
The Lake Orion varsity football season kicked off on August 29th when the Dragons traveled to Northville and came away with a 21-13 victory over the Mustangs. They improved to 2-0 after soundly defeating the Stony Creek Cougars 42-13. The Dragons returned to Lake Orion for their home opener against the Troy Colts on September 13th. Could they keep their undefeated streak going? ONTV's Joe Johnson has the exciting highlights. On the evening of Friday the 13th, the 2-0 Dragons hosted the 2-0 Troy Colts for Lake Orion's home opener. Facing a 4th and 21 on the Dragons 45, the Colts punted, which netted negative yards, allowing the Dragons to begin their drive near midfield. Following a productive drive, the Dragons are facing a second and six on the Colts 14. Quarterback T.R. Hill is under center. He takes the snap and hands off to Jackson Vasquez and goes left, breaks, tackles, and finds the end zone for the first TD of the game. The snap on the extra point was mishandled, but the Dragons take an early 6-0 lead with the first quarter winding down. A 28-yard Will Hoffman field goal put the Dragons up 9-0 at the end of the first half. The Dragons begin the second half without their starting quarterback, T.R. Hill, due to an injury to his non-throwing shoulder. Backup quarterback junior Brody Thompson is in shotgun with Lake Orion, threatening the score from the Colts' two-yard line. On third and goal, Thompson takes the snap and keeps it, plunging into the end zone for the score, capping a 10-play, 51-yard drive. The Hoffman PAT was good, and the Dragons are up 16-0 with 6.24 left in the third. Following a Colts punt, Jackson Vasquez fields the ball at the 20 and heads up the middle, then makes a cut and returns the kick all the way to the Colts 32. On the very next play, Thompson is in shotgun. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it, stumbles at the five, but falls into the end zone. What a run. The extra point was good and the Dragons extend their lead 23-0 with 4.55 left in the third. Following a safety to make the score 25-0, the Dragons begin a drive on their own 40. On first and 10 from the Colts 17, Thompson is in shotgun once again. He fakes the handoff, keeps it, goes left, and scampers into the end zone untouched for his third rushing TD of the second half. The Hoffman PAT was good to make the score 32-0, and that's how the game would end, with the Dragons defense securing the shutout. We caught up with head coach Chris Bell after the game. Yeah, good quarterbacks, you know, and then they both have different skill sets. Um, so we're in good hands. You know, our offense, obviously, TR is a game changer. You know, he's special. But our offense doesn't change much with those two guys. They can both throw it. They can both run it. You know, our offensive line took over in the second half. So we, we have weapons, and we feel good. Your defensive backfield looks shaky to start the game. They gave us some plays, but... Yeah. They locked it down in the second half. Second half they did. And I credit to, to Russ Purdy. He made some adjustments with our coverage, brought a little more pressure. And they got good athletes. They got a good quarterback. And you know, and uh, they were taking advantage of some of the things that we do in our coverage and, and uh, you know, our defense adjusted, which is important. On Friday, September 20th, the Dragons visit their neighbors to the north and take on the Oxford Wildcats in the battle for the double O trophy. Then they return home to host Rochester Adams on September 27th. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV Sports. Thanks, Joe. Let's hope the Dragons can keep it going against Oxford. Throughout the year, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce celebrates grand openings and major milestones for local businesses. Recently, the Chamber welcomed a new member that has a long history in the community. On Thursday, September 5th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce gathered at Midas Acorn Tire and Auto on M24 to welcome their newest member with a ribbon cutting ceremony. On the count of three. One, two, three, Acorn! Acorn! Woo! Right. We want to be part of a community. We don't want to just be a business that makes money. Um, just like our, our, um, our employees are family and we treat our customers like family, we want to be the, you know, part of the family of, of Lake Orion and Orion Township. And um, I mean, I, I like, I just bought a bike from across the street, and I got a fireplace uh, last year, or, uh, or a, a grill last year from Shores. So I like keeping it in the community, and that's what I've encouraged all of our stores to do. Whatever community in, own it, find a charity, um, find a cause, get involved with the chamber, 
you know, so that you are part of the community. Lake Orion residents know that Midas has been a longtime fixture on M24, dating back to the mid 80s. Midas Acorn Tire and Auto has been around since 1971, purchasing the Lake Orion location two and a half years ago. They currently have 13 Midas locations in Michigan. I, I actually have the blueprints upstairs in my office from when this was built, and I believe it was 83, 84, and before that, it was actually a gas station, an old time gas station from like the 30s or 40s, really. So yes, it's been here a long time. We do everything with the exception of uh, body work. Oh, okay. So tires were, uh, we were uh, Midas Corp is actually owned by Michelin and Sumitomo Tires. A lot of people don't know that. So we are uh, big into tires. Um, we do a lot of stuff. We call it own the wheel well. We do a lot of stuff in the wheel well, brakes, shocks, struts, um, things like that. But uh, yeah, really anything. We're replacing an engine today, um, anything you need. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.